myself with my eyes watered a little and just looking around and seeing how serious everybody was. It was, uh, it was a good feeling. I mean, you felt a kind of sense of, of uh, friendship and you know just being together. It was, uh, it was a nice thing. I, I thought they did a good job with it. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Comiskey Park for game two of this three-game set against the New York Yankees. And along with Darren Jackson, I'm Ken Harrelson as we get set to bring you this home stand. Sox took it on the chin last night by a score of 11 to 3, but that really was not the story of the evening. First of all, it was getting back to the game of baseball, something we had missed because of the unprecedented tragedy on Tuesday, September the 11th. But DJ last night, Sox put on a pregame show that was acclaimed by most people around baseball to be one of the best pregame festivities in the whole game. Well, it was very emotional, you know. It was hard for you and I both to keep our eyes dry. But you know, it's a, it just a tribute that was well deserved, and it was it was a beautiful event. It was great to be a part of it and be here, and uh, it was also good to have baseball come back and, and be a, a, a let's say a distraction for the fans at a time where it's needed. Well, you can see they brought out some of Chicago's bravest and finest out there. Firemen and the policemen joined side by side, circling the field. Jerry Manuel, as you saw earlier, and Joe Torre exchanging some pleasantries and. Truly, that was a thing last night. There was another sign that says, tonight all of us are Yankees, and they were so true. But it'll be Roger Clemens out there on the bump tonight. He'll be opposed by Gary Glover, and Roger Clemens trying to do something nobody else in the game of baseball has ever done. Win 20 of his first 21 decisions. Welcome back to Comiskey Park. Sox set to play the second game of this three-game set. Tonight, it's a tough task facing the 19-1 Roger Clemens. Especially after the thrashing the White Sox took last night, 11-3. Uh, they say Orlando Hernandez, who just handed the bats right back to the White Sox. So tonight, they need a little offense. And Gary Glover out there on the hill for the Sox. Got to hold him in check. All right now, let's take a look at Joe Torre's starting lineup tonight. Anything started is Chuck Knobloch out in left field. Shortstop is Derek Jeter. Center fielder Bernie Williams bats third, and the cleanup hitter is first baseman Tino Martinez. The DH is Dave Justice doing the catching. Jorge Posada gave himself a grand slam last night, had five RBIs. Shane Spencer is in right field. Scott Brocious down at third base, and closed it out with Alfonso Soriano at second. Here's Gary Glover's numbers four and two, with four, six, nine ERA. First time seeing these Yankees. Seven starts he's made this year. He's one and one as a starter with a 4.84 ERA. Let's check out the rest of the defense behind Gary Glover as he finishes warm up tosses. From left to right in the outfield, you have Lee Singleton and Ardonias. The infield is Valentin, Clayton, Durham, and Conurco. Behind the plate is Mark Johnson. The weather tonight is cool 62 degrees, 87% humidity. Winds not too strong at five to ten. It's cooling down. We do have a little bit of drizzling going on here right now. As you see the umpires for tonight, Mike Winters behind the plate, Ted Barrett at first, Rob Drake down at second. Alfonso Marquez is down at third base. So Gary Glover set to take his last warm-up toss, and then Johnson to throw it on down. Chuck Knobloch a stroll to the plate, and it's time for Hawk to take it away. Hi, right, DJ. Thank you. And once again, good evening, everyone, and welcome to White Sox baseball right here on Fox Sports Net. So happy you could join us for game two of this three game set. Game two of this nine game homestand. Three with the Yankees, three with Kansas City, and three with Minnesota. And Chuck Knobloch gets set to lead it off. Knobloch hitting it 251, seven homers. He's driven in 40, two for five last evening with an RBI. Yankees come in 30 games over it, 87 and 57, 13 games in front of Boston. First pitch off the plate. Knobloch, 33 year old veteran, many, many years a second baseman. Now, because of that problem, they put him in left field. Put him one to count. Yankees 41 and 31 on the road. They have won five in a row. And they have won 10 of their last 11. 
Last night was the first meeting of the year between these two clubs. Last season they met 12 times and the Sox won eight of them. Gary Glover, the 24 year old right hander, 6'5, 205 pounds out of Deland, Florida. Misses upstairs, two and two. You're at Comiskey Park. 330 down the left field line, 372 in left center, 400 straightaway center, 377 in right center, and 335 down the right field line. And the chopper stays down. Can he get him? Nice peg, yes. Nice job right there. Royce Clayton did stay down with that and didn't waste any time. He's going to catch it, plant, and throw. You have a leadoff hitter that runs well. It's exactly the way to get him when he hits in the hole. And all of us here at Fox Sports Net would like to welcome our affiliate, Mediacom, and all of yours in Dubuque, Iowa. Dubuque? Yes. They have got a ton of my money in Dubuque. Good. So here's Jeter, three for four last evening. Now feel around to the right. There's a strike. That evens the count of one. I talked to a couple of Sox players before the game today and asked them about how they felt getting back out there yesterday. They said, boy. My time it was off and I didn't even know it would be that bad. That's into center field. Singleton is there. Chris, two game. Well. Nobody knew how it was going to be because nobody's ever done anything like that. Nobody's ever gone through anything like that. And as you well know, DJ, you got 25 players. And you're probably going to have, you know. 15 to 20 different kinds of emotions. And they also said it was awfully weird to see how the Yankees seemed like they'd been playing games during that time. They just came right out. They did notice that you know, some guys just handle it differently. Here's Bernie Williams. Takes ball one. Also going to be a different amount of adrenaline between these two teams right now at this time of the year as the Yankees getting set for the playoffs. Well I think last night you know up until the sixth inning everything in that ball game was was OK then they had uh, the two ejections. Then after that it seems like all the wind went out of the sails of the Sox. There's the strike. But Hernandez really jerked up a good one last evening going seven innings no runs just two hits he dominated the Sox hitters so if you're going to do that I mean you know that'll make you look a little bit different than a team that's scoring 11 runs on you. That's exactly right I mean you know we talked about it a bit last night every individual on these teams is going to handle this layoff differently and their emotions are going to be quite different from the whole situation so. It just seems that the Yankees somehow put it together a little quicker. Pops him up. Good inning right here for Gary Glover. Jose makes a catch. And that'll do it after happening a play. It's the Yankees nothing and the good guys coming to back. Time right now to take a look at Jerry Manuel's starting lineup. Getting things started. Second baseman, Ray Durham. That'll be followed by Jose Valentin at third base. Max Ordonez is in right field. Paul Canerco clean up here at first. DH is Jeff Leifer. Carlos Lee is in left field. Benny says Chris Singleton is in center field. Shortstop Royce Clayton and close it out with Mark Johnson behind the plate. Take a look at Roger Clemens, 19 and one with a 3.44 ERA, career record of 279 victories, 143 losses with a 3.09 ERA. His career also 19 and nine versus the Sox. Nine. 2.69 ERA. Let's check out the defense behind Roger tonight. In the outfield, left to right, you have Knobloch, Williams, and Spencer. Infield is Brocious, Jeter, Soriano, and Martinez. You have to play Jorge Posada. And before we show you our picks to click you at home, select yours as Ray Durham will lead it off. 
Anyway, 0 for 2 last evening, hitting into 262, 18 homers. He's driven in 55. Lifetime against Clemens, faced him 30 times, has nine hits, one homer. Brosius in on the grass at third. Jams him first pitch. Soriano. One out. Well, an interesting thing Roger Clemens has going on for him. He has won 15 in a row, five times Cy Young Award winner. Also, most valuable player back in 86. And he is trying to become the first man ever to win 20 of his first 21 decisions. Rube Marquard, back in 1912, started off with the Giants 19 and 1 before finishing up that season at 26 and 11. 26 and 11, 19 and 1. Wow. Well, Clemens does have nine no decisions this season. His only loss came against Seattle back in May 20. There's eight fouls at that. Side corner tried to back door him with a curveball. Jose seven for 26 lifetime against Clemens with a couple of homers. the Sox that will be the 16 that he has won 20 or more against in his career. Breaking ball in the center field Bernie Williams right there so both men Glover and Cummins one two three will go to second scoreless. Right now let's check out our Geico direct moment quote from Jerry Manuel and the return of baseball today is off probably rejuvenated people to get back to where the what they love doing and that's playing baseball. Hopefully everyone can take it up to a level that can be entertaining and exciting for the country. It'll be Martinez Justice and Posada here in the top of the second no score. Martinez one for three with an RBI last evening. Thirty two homers one hundred six driven in. That was career career high forty four home runs. Tommy was at one. And a reminder for every strikeout recorded by a Sox pitcher this season Taco Bell is proud to make a charitable donation to the Boys and Girls Club of Chicago Taco Bell pitching for the kids of Chicago. 
third time in Tino's career that he's hit at least 30 home runs. Ravik Torrance, 61 career and 995 in the RBIs. Three and one the count. Remember when Tino first came into the league? Looked like he may have a tough time adjusting. He had a slow bat. The only thing he could really hit hard was an all speed pitch. And boy, did he make some adjustments. He became an outstanding fastball hitter. Well, by his free agent year with Seattle, that year I think he had 33 home runs. That was his biggest productive year and got to the Yankees and just took off. He's gone. One out. Tino Martinez has been very, very steady since that last year with the Mariners. Through his career here with the Yankees, as Glover just reached back, fires a 92 mile an hour fastball up in the zone. You saw from pitch tracks. So here's David Justice, 35 years old, hitting a 250, 18 homers. He's driven in 51. He did not play last evening. Checking the slate of action for you around the American League. Kansas City taking on Cleveland at Jacobs Field. They have just concluded a rain delay there on the bottom of the second. One nothing Indians. Tampa Bay at Boston. Baltimore, Toronto. Texas at home against Oakland. Detroit at Minnesota. And Seattle hosting. Over in the National League, Cubs leading the Reds 7 0, bottom of the fourth at Synergy Field. Nets won the, their ninth out of the last 10 ball games. They beat Pittsburgh 5 2. Cardinals beat Milwaukee this afternoon 8 2 in St. Louis. Atlanta at Philadelphia, top of the six. They are tied at two. Look at Royce, look at this play. Yes! Had to get it done right there. Royce Clayton. We've seen him do it this year quite a bit. Go up the middle, almost behind second base. Gary Glover. You know, not be able to reach out and grab it, but Royce does a good job of making sure that he catches the ball. That's all there is to it. He gets the glove down low, gives his body up, doesn't think about that. Times it just to leave his feet while his body's in the air. Gloves catching the ball. Here's the switch hitting catcher, Jorge Posada. Decided 279, 21 homers, 93 driven in. Drove in five last evening. Other action around the National League. So is Florida at Montreal. Arizona at Colorado. That game in the top of the fourth. Rockies leading seven to nothing. Later on, San Diego and LA and Houston taking on the Giants at Pac Bell. A play where Royce had to leave his feet to make make the grab. His body hits before the ball makes it to his glove. It's going to be jarring. So fouls that one straight back. But you got to time it to where you literally have not made contact with the ground yet while you're reaching out there to make that grab. And Royce, we've seen him do it a lot this year. He does that perfectly. As good or as quick is a better way to put it. At getting up at the shortstop position once he hits the ground is Christian Guzman. And he's got a cannon that allows him. He doesn't even have to be as quick because the speed of the ball again at first makes up some time. Now we saw somebody just recently that was pretty dang quick in that infield. In Cleveland. John McDonald. Quick to the ball and quick off his feet and then quick back up on him. Yeah, Guzman is back. That's one reason the Twins have been playing better. That is so true. He's an igniter for him. He's the heart of that ball club, in my opinion. Full count. I mean, he is. When he went down, that club went south. Yeah, it did. You know, and then the addition also of David Ortiz, a big guy in the middle of the lineup, helps. That's for sure. And those two back at similar time was really a bonus. One 
Once again, the payoff pitch. This with a curveball. So the first base runner of the ball game. That'll bring up the right fielder Shane Spencer hitting at 264 nine homers he's doing in 39. He and Posada went back to back in the seventh inning last evening. And outfield playing him spread out straight up. Spencer first made it to the big leagues. Ooh, it was burst on the scene with power numbers. It was almost amazing. Not hit hard off the end of the bat, just over the head of Jose. So the first hit of the ball. Carried right over into the playoffs for him, too. I can't recall what year it was, maybe 98. So the Yankees with two out have two on and here is Scott Brosis. There are his numbers 293 12 and 42. 35 year old veteran. about other matters than the game itself. And that's a tribute to the manager. Yeah, that's true. It is so hard to control or keep, you know, certain personalities from stirring it up a bit. And popping off. Yeah. And he does a good job of doing that. That's popped up. Stay in here. Come back. And there it go over by the Yankee dugout. Dangerous dugout area. The stairs, and right now it's a little slick and slippery. It's been drizzling a bit. Paul, you got to get over here, feel for himself where he's at, know exactly where the edge of those stairs are, and try and reach out without going down in there and hurting himself. We've seen a lot of guys go down in those stairs and get hurt. The last one I remember, big injury was Mo Vaughn. And there's a base hit right off the end of the bat. So here comes Posada. He'll score. And the walk jumps up and bites Gary Glover. 1 0 New York. You get that walk. A little broken bat hit by Spencer. A little blooper by Spencer. And then this one right off the end of the bat placed nicely by Brocious. At the same time, just about five inches from the edge of. Paul Kernoko's mitt to get out of the inning. And that'll bring up the second baseman, Alfonso Soriano. Three for four last night with a homer. You want to see a quick bat. This young man has it. Quick live bat right through the hitting zone. 
Last night, every time, took first pitch. So he's not, Shows you a lot of confidence. Yeah, but he's not done a good job. You see, with runners in scoring position, that graphic hitting 130 with two outs, and on a whole, 211. So he's had a lot of opportunities because he has 67 RBIs. Oh, and two the count. The only time he made an out last evening was his last at bat in the ninth inning when he struck out on a real high fastball, way out of the zone. Forty one stolen bases hitting at 277 17 homes 67 ribbies 32 doubles and three triples. Not bad for a young rookie. With all around tools and talent he has got them. One and two. It normally was a shortstop. But Derek Jeter there. Uh -uh. So learned basically in spring training this year how to play second base. Lays off that high heater. Well, we've been hearing about him for a couple of years. And now it's very evident why. I remember Chris Singleton played with him before he joined the joined the White Sox in 99 in the minor leagues. He knew about him all the way. I was talking about Soriano's talent and ability. They look at Soriano's swing right here from the side. A little leg kick, and then right there at the hitting zone. That ball got in on him a little bit. He's got a good idea and a good approach to getting to it quickly. Yes, he's gone. And that'll retire the side, but the Yankees get on the board and after an inning and a half. One nothing New York. Those in the Cubs battle King Griffey Jr. and the Cincinnati Reds. Coverage starts with Dodge of Midlothian Chicago Sports Today. Cubs Reds tomorrow at 11 on Fox Sports Net. It'll be Canerco, Lee, check that leafer, and Lee. One nothing Yankees. Canerco hitting at 282, 30 homers. He's driven in 92. Drew the collar last night in four at bats. And lifetime against Clemens. Eight at bats, two hits. Drive out of the park. Here's Leifer. Takes that pitch high, and with that home run by Canerco, the Alex Snellius family will donate $100 to Chicago White Sox charities for every White Sox home run hit during the 2001 season. Alex and Ursula Snellius, thank you. 
That is number 197, $19,700. Second the AL on home runs. Also on a pace to set up. White Sox record in home runs last year, a 215. A chance if they continue on to surpass that. Turn one to count to Leifer. There's your home run league leaders. Rangers far and above running away with that title. That one in the left field, not block. One out. I was talking about before that Canerga home run. Guys had mentioned that coming back after a long layoff, their bodies are not as loose. They just really had a chance to peel all those adhesions and they come back and it's hard to break right back through them the way they were on a daily basis when they were out there. There's a curveball strike to Carlos Lee. Carlos at 269, 22 homers, 78 driven in. Two for 11 lifetime against Clemens. A home run by Canerco, the 18th thrown by Roger this season. Not bad. No. 197 innings in. Not bad at all. Carlos Lee for tonight had really been struggling. Three for his last 24 and 208 in his last 18 ball games. 223 since the All Star break. Two and one to count. Silent to the outside. Now Clemens' longevity has been based a lot on. There's one guy who has really used his legs well. Look at all the guys who have pitched for long periods of time. Nobody used their legs any better than Nolan Ryan. He pitched almost 27 years, and that's a high ball four. When you use your legs that well, chances are you're going to use your lower back. Has always been one of those drop and drive pitchers. And the more you use your legs, the more you use your lower back, the easier it makes it on your arm. Yeah, I'd have to say, uh, quite a bit. If you look at the history of the guys that had the longer careers, they did exactly that. They did a great job using their lower portion of their body. Okay. Say a Tom Seaver. Great job using his legs. Some of the top guys, the best pitchers, really, on a drive from their legs. Here's Singleton, Chris, at 298, seven homers. He's driven in 39, 0 for 4 last evening. In lifetime against Clemens. 3 for 10. Looking for it, got it. A little bit tardy. That's the funny thing about sitting on Roger Clemens' fastball. You can be ready for it, but a lot of times you're not 100% sure he's going to come with it because he does mix it up, not just a flamethrower who's going to challenge you all the time. He's pretty smart out there. And he backdoors him with a curveball. Right thing when you do sit on a guy like Roger Clemens' fastball, you just got to commit to it. Say, so here it comes. I'm not going to be late on it. I'm going to get to it. Now 
off the plate. You know when you talk to pitchers today a lot of them. They ask them about. Using their lower back. And they really don't understand what you're talking about. It's almost becoming a lost phrase. Well, it's got to be taught. Somebody's got to teach them. Otherwise, they'll never know. Unless they can figure it out on their own, which a lot of guys can't. Well, I'll tell you what, in the last 10 or 15 years, I've talked to a lot of pitching coaches and asked them if they're teaching lower back. And the majority said no. So I'll tell you, they didn't know what, what it was. Talking with Don Drysdale for many, many, many hours about using the lower back. Of course, Don, in my opinion, knew just about as much about pitching as anybody. And he said it's imperative. He said to have any kind of a, a career. There's a little soft line drive, and they're going to double him up. But the Sox get the home run by Canerco, number 31. We'll go to the third tight end one. Time right now to have a look at our Jose Cuervo Cantina fan cam. Still have a lot of people in attendance that showing their patriotism. That American flag. And glad to be back out of the ballpark, which of course has always been known as America's pastime. Right here, top of the third, one one time. Also be the top of the order for the Yankees. Knob block Jeter and Williams to face Gary Glover. Glover making his eighth start, and this is 43rd appearance. Knob block first time up, leading off the ball game, hit one in the hole. And Royce Clayton made a very fine play to get him easily at first base. Chuck Knobloch in 97 in Minnesota and two totally different players that you'd see from then to now. Well, you've seen it before and I have too quite a few times. Or my career DJ you see a, an individual who plays and plays and is a heck of a player and all of a sudden it's a brain cramp and can't throw the baseball in. Uh, he was one of the top leadoff men that I'd ever played with. Took his walks, worked deep into counts, was not thinking about home runs. He got away from what he was doing in Minnesota, got into Yankee Stadium, started turning on more balls, trying to hit more balls in the air. Average started to come down a little bit. And defensively, things changed for him, obviously, when he got off that Astro turf, and then he had the middle block throwing the ball. Up high, two and two. That's a sad thing to see. And I guess. The first one that I ever saw was a right-hander in the Pittsburgh organization, or the club, I should say, Steve Blass. I faced Steve Blass, and he had outstanding control. Had some good years for the Pirates, as there's a chopper, two hopper to Clayton. And all of a sudden, he goes out there one spring and poof, can't throw it, but can't throw it in a cage. Well, the amazing thing is, there's the Tommy John surgery, as it's pretty much nicknamed, known. There's also the Steve Blass syndrome. Baseball, no. When you say the Steve Blass syndrome, that's not that's not a good thing. You know, a guy has got a middle block and cannot hit the broad side of a barn with a throw. Well, I saw it happen in the minor leagues with a couple of guys that I played with. So I have also saw it before Blass. Steve Sachs had a lot of catchers over the years who had that middle block. They could not throw it back to the pitcher. Here's Jeter. Did you ever have a, when you were playing baseball? Did you ever have a recurring dream? Yeah. What, what was yours? Every, every player has one. <laughs> it would be that uh, I would be late for the start of a ball game. I was batting leadoff, and I had the fear of being late, missing that first at bat. But the game was waiting on me to run out there, and I'd run out there, and I forgot to put my socks on. Hung that one way back, and it's two-one Yankees. Got a hanger and he didn't miss it. That's number 19 for Jeter. Out there, Jeter. 
Saw him hit him soft last night and get a couple of hits, then hit one hard. He's also capable of doing this. You see, number 19. He's a outstanding hitter, especially on off-speed stuff because his main approach is to drive the ball, the fastball, the other direction, and you hang him a breaking ball, and he does exactly that with it. He can hit it. There are a whole bunch of guys going to hit that pitch right there out of the ballpark. As here's Bernie Williams. Takes a strike. Bernie popped up to third. How about you? My recurring dream when I played was that I would hit the ball and I couldn't get out of the box. I couldn't run. Couldn't run the first. The old cement feet, huh? I just, I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't run the first. Well, it's a bad feeling when you're holding up the ball game. Everybody's waiting for you. You run out there. You get in the box and they look down. Say, "You got no socks, son. Get out of here." And then they start the game without you. Well, the most important thing you have a couple. They wouldn't let me play. They told me to get the heck. They waited long enough. They weren't waiting for me to go put my socks on now, too. Oh, so you had part two of it. <laughs> they sent me home. <laughs> Nobody was real happy with me. Two and two the count. That's all with some pictures about their recurring dreams. They say, oh, yeah. And most of them, they just could not hit the catcher. They could not throw the ball and hit the catcher. There he's gone. Good curveball. Down and in. Two out. Here's the last pitch, the breaking ball from Gary Glover. That good curveball that he does have. Especially if it's down there. That's well out of the strike zone, but good teasing breaking ball for Bernie Williams, and he will go over the top of the breaking ball right there. A lot of times he's got some good bite on it. Chase it. Here's Tina Martinez struck out on a fastball. He follows that fastball back. Here's a reminder the White Sox face the Royals this Sunday at 105. It's Fan Appreciation Day at Comiskey Park, featuring lots of fun and great prizes for White Sox fans. For tickets, call 312831 Sox. One and one. I did play with a guy in the minor leagues we've talked about before in the broadcast, Gary Forsha, at second base. And he went through the, the throwing syndrome. Did he? Yeah. He couldn't throw to first base either. Eventually became a left fielder, just like Chick Tablock. And he actually played some good left field. Two balls, two strikes, two out. Two runs, three hits, no errors for the Yankees. One run, one hit, no errors for the Sox. Cincinnati nine to nothing top of the six at Synergy Field. Phillies leading Atlanta four two trying to bring their third straight against the Braves. That's in the bottom of the seventh at Veteran Stadium. Colorado leading the D-backs seven to two bottom of the fifth at Coors Field. Chopper two hopper to Durham. But the hanging curveball by Gary Glover hit out of here by Jeter. And after two and a half, Yankees by one. Win a trip for two to Cuervo Nation in the British Virgin Islands. Visit the Jose Cuervo Cantina by the scoreboard or call 1 8 6 6 6 Cuervo. Guess the number of home runs you think the White Sox will hit during the regular season, and you could be a winner. You must be 21 or older to enter this contest. 2 1 Yankees here in the bottom of the third. It'll be Clayton Johnson and then back to the top of the order with Ray Durham. First pitch right there. Two 
Second baseman Sariano. And some members of the Red Cross taking donations for the disaster relief fund. And certainly Americans have poured their hearts and their money, tens of millions of dollars already have been donated along with tons of food and clothing. Here's Mark. Two for two last night. Next first pitch fastball strike. Kind of evens at one. Tigers leading Minnesota four to one. Top of the fourth in Minneapolis. Cleveland leading Kansas City three two. Bottom of the fourth at Jacobs Field. Johnson, not a big power guy. You see him sometimes try to get ahead of those guys with some off speed stuff. He knows those are the guys that are expecting to be challenged by him. Clemens, 136 games over the 500 mark in his career. That's the story here in the top of the fourth inning. It'll be Justice, Posada, and Spencer to face Gary Glover. First pitch strike. Justice hit a ball back through the middle at Royce Clayton. Made a good play to get it. Two. Starts him off with a fastball. Comes back with a change. And you saw Justice's hips kind of committing to a fastball. He was ready to pull the trigger on something hard. And perfectly located changeup by Glover. Yes, he's gone. Take a look at our FLAC trivia question. Roger Clemens has won six ERA titles. Who is the only pitcher in Major League history to win more than him? Somebody who pitched in the 20s and 30s. Here's Posada. He drew that leadoff walk. Checked at that two out walk back in the second inning. Nobody on. Posada walks, and then he came around to score.
good curve. Oh, and two. Are you playing the 20s and 30s? Who was it? He was pretty good. Got a heck of a spitter. Oh, the old wet ball. Mm -hmm. He's gone. Good curveball. Five strikeouts for Gary. And here's a reminder. Pre-game party in the Comiskey Park patio is the best way to entertain large groups. The patio is perfect for any special event, including office outings, birthdays, and more. For details, call 312-674-1000. Here Spencer had a little soft single right off the end of the bat. Now leading the Reds 10 nothing, bottom of the sixth in Cincinnati. Billy's leading the Braves 5 2, bottom of the seventh, in Veteran Stadium. And the the count 0 2. We're doing some chunking here in the top of the fourth. He has good stuff. One, two, three inning. And we'll go to the bottom of the fourth. We need one to tie. Let's take a look right now at our Aflac trivia question and answer. Roger Clemens has won six ERA titles, who so is the only pitcher in Major League history to win more than him. Lefty Grove, nine ERA titles. I used to have a recurring dream about him, too. Jose can't get it. 2 1 Yankees. As they fly to right field, his first at bat. That's low. You gotta give me some props. I threw that name out there. That's low. You don't you know, have to, I guess. You don't have to acknowledge that I threw Lefty Guerrero's name out there. So I knew it was possibly him. Out of three names. Pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> A legend in his own mind. <laughs> Not block. And here's a reminder. This Sunday is Willie Wonka's Kids Day, presented by Fruit Runs. The White Sox host the Royals at 105. Fans can collect autographs pregame, and kids can run the bases postgame. Plus, kids' tickets are just a dollar at the Comiskey Park ticket windows on the day of the game. I would have gone with Christy Matheson. Well, it was either Christy or Walter. Walter, big train. And I threw Lefty out there. Give it to me. Here's Mags fly to center field. Texas trying to snap Oakland's nine game winning streak. Rangers leading three nothing. Bottom of the third at home. And there's a little duck snort. Yes. Right off the end of the bat. Mags digging. Digging. Throw by Spencer. It's tying off the mark. So the one out double. Number 37 for Maglio. Now, how do you get it? Just get it. Oh, shattered bat. Flare perfectly placed down that right field line. Good pitch by Clemens. Fastball away. Just a little dart he was throwing out there on the outside corner. Maglio wishing it fair as he was running down the line. Well, here's Canerco. Let off the second with his 31st homer. And now has 93 ribbies. Outfield. 
Straight up, spread out. And if you're just turning in and missed it, poof. Rocket left a split right over the play for Pauly. says 22 stolen bases in 27 attempts. Soriano jockeying just a little bit. There's some high gas. He reached back. A little giddy up on that one. There's a collection for you. Goodness. That's you, Feist. I can see you right now on the first tee. <laughs> Dan Marino tournament. Take you away from my actual golf. That's outside. Two and two. No distraction for other than my swing. No, even that hat wouldn't <laughs> suffice. Uh, this time, uh, this time you see me, I'm gonna be quite improved. You are? Mm-hmm. No, oh, Polly, tie this ball game up. Knock him in. The 2-2. Two -two. Good pitch to hit. Made a pretty good pass out. Well, it appears Roger Clemens is not going to make the same mistake twice. He's not going to get caught in between the speed of the splitty and the fastball as he did before. Now he's just reaching back and put a little extra on especially with two strikes. Not going to leave it out over the plate for Pauly to catch up to him. And Paul did hit that home run. The count was one and two. He did have two strikes on him so. You see the difference. 95, 96 mile an hour heaters now. We hadn't seen more than 94 prior to this event for Clemens. It's quite a story about Clemens. The tragedy hit last Tuesday. He ran in a car and drove down to Texas to be with his family. Flew up here to Chicago on Sunday. Roger's a good man. He's a good man. Here's a base hit. Mags really did not get a real good jump. Maybe he didn't check his outfield. Actually, kind of froze. That ball was hitting. He was not even moving. This ball that shoots us into right field, and you're right. Probably just a case of not checking your outfielders. And that's the kind of little thing right now when you've been away from the game for an extended period of time. See, Maglio is going to be hit. He's going to stand there. Actually, he just stood there for a second as it was hit, and then did a secondary and and froze. It was not. It didn't look like it from that angle, but it was not a real good jump. So here's Leifert. He flies to not block in left field. One out runners at the corners. He 
a souvenir last time. Well, those are the little things that turn into big things. Well, the White Sox have had a, a season of little things that have cost them dearly. And you know, you get a layoff and then you have to finish the season and it's extended. You kind of get that layoff that's going to probably make it a little more magnified when they make these mistakes. Because now you're going to sit there and have to point out that, hey, you know what? It might be a little rusty. It, it's not just an issue of them making mental mistakes. It's, are they going to be able to snap out of that delay? Hopefully, they got this. Is, for this tonight, 16 ball games left, and they want to play sound baseball and win some games. Striking out. Come on, Leaf. Leaf now 0 for 4 lifetime against the Rocket. You know, talking about Roger being a good man. I, I think I understand, but you can't be for sure. He's the only one that knows in that Piazza incident. Oh, he had a pretty good pitch to hit underneath. It. He's just so competitive. And there had been so much made out of when he hit Piazza in the head. I just think he had a, a snap. You know, it hit Piazza in the head, and there was a history of him knocking Piazza down another time or two. He just really, Piazza had hit him so well, he decided he was going to start flipping him a lot. And uh, something happened, yeah. Full count. Well, that in that case, Rocket felt that Piazza felt a little too comfortable in the batter's box against him. I know I'd seen highlights of him hitting a few home runs against him. Uh, Roger said, "Ah, oh, not anymore. Too much, Mr. Nice Guy, where he wasn't pitching in enough." Here's the payoff pitch. Just did get a piece of it. Pretty good, pretty good splitter right there by Pumas. Well, that's when his splitter is the most effective. I remember facing him when there was a 3 2 count one time. Bases loaded, and of course, he threw aces me with a 3 2 splitting. And it's not a big breaking split, it's just enough to get you over the top of it. I believe he did a good job getting a piece. And there's a base hit. Mags will score. Canerco will pull up at second base. And this game is tied at two. There's a good advantage for Jeff Lee. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. That 3 2 splitty that he was able to get a piece of, and then he gets the fastball. Rocket breaks his bat, but put a beautiful pass on it and hits the liner in the right field. You've seen a 3 2 splitty from Roger Clemens. To be able to cover that fastball, you're doing a good job. And that's what we discuss so often is the fact that the more experienced guys learn how to lay off and fight off tough pitchers' pitches. If you do it long enough, you're going to get something good to hit. Here's Carlos. He walked. In the second. Carlos got that big swing going on that 95 mile an hour fastball. That won't work upstairs against Roger Clemens. Unfortunately, Carlos has been in a funk for 
the whole second half of the season. And you can look in his face right now and see the the confusion. He's just not very confident right now. One and one to count. Well, what you got to hope for right here, being a Sox fan, is maybe Clemens will hit his bat, which happens. Yeah, and you know what? And, and Carlos Lee you just saw that big sigh from him a second ago. Carlos Lee is sometimes hoping that. Just throw it up here and hit my bat. And it's low. Good eye. Two and one. You can even get in the catbird seat, get ahead in the count, and still, because things haven't gone right, not feel that confident. The minute you are swinging the bat well, and you get ahead in the count, boy, you're saying, bring it on. Talk about somebody hitting your bat. Does that really happen? Well, I've hit home runs before. I've been in slumps when I've hit home runs, and I was the most surprised guy in the ball. Oh, it happens. Pitcher literally hit my bat. Oh, it happens. Sometimes you'll see a hitter. He'll start his swing. The pitcher hasn't even let go of the ball yet. He's just, all right, he's coming with a fastball. I'm swinging. And by the time that ball's let go, you've already committed almost to the area you're going to be swinging. So, yeah, he hit your bat. Here's a 2-2. Two -two. Back to Soriano makes a nice pick, and they'll turn. So the second double play turned by the Yankees, but Sox put a run on the board. We'll go the fifth, tied at two. Whatever concerns you, inspires you, enchants you, or thrills you, there's a channel for you on AT&T Broadband. AT&T Broadband, where there's something for everyone. For the most in-depth coverage of the Chicago sports scene, don't miss Chicago Sports Tonight. It's a half hour of news, analysis, highlights, and interviews, and it's all Chicago. Chicago Sports Tonight, tomorrow at 6.30 on Fox Sports Net. Third baseman Scott Brosius gets set to lead off the top of the fifth. It'll be Brosius, Soriano, and Knobloch. Grosius, one for one with an RBI hit a high curveball right off the end of the bat in the hole between third and short. Swing by Brosius, one and one. Now getting back to that pitcher hitting your bat. We used to have an outfielder here named Yvonne Calderon. I remember Yvonne played against him for the Great minor guy. leagues. Oh, Great yeah. guy. Good hitter, too. Yeah, he was. And brutally honest. You know, that's one reason I love him so much. Checks it up, fouls it off. He had a two run homer. Can't remember who it was against the Tigers. To win the ball game. So after the game, we're going back on the bus and we're sitting by each other. I said, Yvonne, I said, were you looking for that pitch? And he goes, Hawk, I had no idea that I even hit the ball. And he was in a slump at the time. Hmm. The pitch didn't get it. Just off the outside corner. Most guys would say, well, it's a slider low and away. I was sitting on an old. <laughs> now, is that straight back? Count hangs at two and two to Brosius. I remember a time I was facing a guy that just owned me and I was struggling. And the game was on the line. Terry Mulholland, I could not buy a hit off of him. I was struggling. Bases are loaded. Face him. I pretty much closed my eyes one time and ran into a ball and in the right center for a triple. Not hit hard. So you definitely remember those times when the ball basically hit your bat. It wasn't me hitting Mulholland in that time, that is for sure. But believe it or not, that changed things for me after that when I faced him. Maybe all of a sudden he thought, oh, this guy can actually put the bat on the ball against me now than his handle. So maybe he pitched a little differently. Steve Donovan. 
One of the trainers, along with Gene Monahan, wearing that New York Police Department hat. Soriano takes first pitch strike. It's caught looking his first trip. Breaking ball right off the end of the bat in the count 0 and 2. Finally came in. Don't give me one of those. You grab me one too. Randy knows my size. Little peanut head you got? No, no, no. It's a perfect size. They were seven three eights. Seven and a quarter. You seven and a half. The bucket head. Seven and three eights. For Glover. And of course, contrary to popular belief, just because you have a bigger head doesn't mean you got more brains. It doesn't. Not block. So that breaks a streak of seven in a row retired by Glover. And here comes Jeter. Waste no time. He gets himself a high slider. Back up the bus. He's right on the glover's foot. There's Jeter. He is fly to center and Homer got a hanging curveball from Gary in the third. Cranked it out of here. Number 19. My thing in your case is here. Showing, you're proving it right there. That theory of the bigger head, lesser brains. <laughs> Outfield slightly to the right, gap in left center. And make your plans to be with us tomorrow night for the finale of this three-game set. Kip Wells against Andy Pettit. Six stolen bases, 44 attempts. So Jeter got himself a count, two and nothing. Not block. That's 36 stolen bases. Not that he's the fastest of runners. He's just he does a good job of stealing bases. It's good jumps. Reads pitchers well. A decent lead for Nabla. Atlanta hitting in the top of the ninth inning, trailing Philadelphia five to two. The Phillies will hang on. Get to win one half game. The Mets, believe it or not. With that 5 2 victory over Pittsburgh this afternoon, we pulled it within five. Let's him go 3 and 0 oh and way back. That's number 20. 
It's a 4-2 Yankee lead. Yankees team can beat you. They get themselves in a position. Joe Torre says, go ahead, kid. You're swinging the bet well. 3-0. Glover's got to go after him. Two-run home run. Twenty homers, 69 RBIs for our Jeter. coming with two out nobody on. So here's Williams he has popped a third and he has struck out. I think he's definitely a team that spread the wealth out amongst themselves. Anybody can beat you with any swing. Yeah they have a. Well, it was good. Especially when it counts. Look at the way they went into the playoffs last year. Where they lost seven in a row. And the count three and nothing. Playing terrible baseball. All of a sudden the playoffs come in. Click. Joe Torre got him motivated at the right time. He knew when it was time for them to turn it on. And he talked to him about it, and they did. And Williams swinging 3 0. Derek Jeter's 3 0. Fastball right there. Head down. Drive it. That's in the center field. Can of corn for Singleton, but the two run homer by Derek Jeter is second of the game. We're halfway home, trailing 4 2. Michael. Time right now to have a look at our Dodge game summary as the Yankees on top 4 to 2. Derek Jeter's got two home runs. Solo shot in a two run blast. Paul Canerco hit his 31st. Chris Singleton stepping in the box to face the Rocket. Chris last time up into a double play. First pitch strike. Outfield. Straight up and spread out. And the count of one two. But the Yankees just don't beat themselves that often. We talked about it in the pregame show. There are certain clubs that you can go back and check out. The best playing, not the most talent, but the best playing team that I've ever seen were the Oakland A's back in the early 70s. They won five consecutive divisional titles, three consecutive world championships. There's a little tackle. Clemens, that time. One out. They knew how to play the game. Over the course of 162, they didn't try to go out there and beat you every day. They didn't care who they were playing. They didn't care the Yankees, the Tigers, the White Sox. It didn't make any difference. They just went out there and they played their own game. Didn't make any mental mistakes. Ran the base as well. They made errors just like everybody else. But somewhere in that nine innings, the other team was going to make the mental mistake or make a mistake. And then they jump all over you. And that's what the Yankees do. Seattle has done that this year. Seattle has played probably the best fundamental baseball of anybody, certainly in this league and probably in the National League as well. And Seattle goes out there, they just let you beat yourself. And then they'll have their games where they come out smoking with the bats. They'll just thump it. It's hard to beat 
Major League teams 162 times. They'll try to beat them 162 times. It's easier as there's a two Harper Soriano. Too good. But in order to take that approach and that philosophy, you have to have guys who know how to play. Johnson grounded out to Soriano. Makes it up high. And here's a reminder see your name or event on the Qu Comiskey Park scoreboard. Messages are available all season long for a $40 donation to Chicago White Sox charities. That's into right center field. Bernie Williams making the call. Two training for Clemens will go to the six, trailing by two. Sending, it'll be Tina Martinez, David Justice, and Jorge Posada to face Gary Glover. Tino has struck out and he is grounded to second. There's an original flag. On the top of that man's head. Him off with of that changeup, gets him out in front, and fouls it back. I mentioned last night, besides having a good season offensively, Tino also has there's a base hit. Had a good year defensively. Got some activity. Sean Lowe. So here's Justice. He's 0 for 2 last time up. Here he just blew him away with a high fastball. Fastball, change, fastball. Strike on the corner. <laughs> Tina Martinez, one for three in stolen base attempts. Broken bat, good pitch. So the twins come to the Miskit Park to face the White Sox September 25th through the 27th. Tickets are available at the Comiskey Park ticket windows. Ticketmaster ticket centers online at whitesox.com or by calling 312-831-SOX. That is the last three games here at Comiskey Park. Here's Posada. He has walked, scored, and struck out. Here he got him on a good curveball down and in. Final from Philadelphia. Phillies over the Braves 5 2. Phillies now a half game behind Atlanta. There's a good strike. He's leading the D-backs eight to two. The game in the bottom of the eighth in Colorado. Cubs thumping the Reds ten nothing. Bottom of the ninth at Synergy Field. Cardinals beat the Brewers eight to two this afternoon. As he jams Posada, pops it up. Carlos is there. Mets 
over the Pirates, nine to two at PNC. Open American League, top of the fifth in Texas, seven three Rangers over the A's. Trying to be ball more four to one. That skyed on. Tampa Bay leading Boston 10 to 2, top of the eighth at Fenway. Bottom of the sixth in Cleveland. Indians leading Kansas City 6 to 2. And top of the seventh in Minnesota. 6 1 Tigers. St. Louis playing hot ball. Won 11 out of their last, excuse me, 9 out of their last 11 games. Catch up to those Astros. Cardinals have won six in a row. To another count to Spencer. Hit it off the end of the bat. Two and two. 18,465 in attendance. At 22,785 last evening, a walk up of 4,539. Sox baseball is brought to you in part by Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. Aflac. Without it, no insurance is complete. And by your local Mercedes-Benz Center. It's the bottom of the sixth inning, 4-6-0 for the Yankees, 2-4-0 for the Sox. It's the top of the order. Durham, Valentin, and Ordonez to face Roger Clemens who's trying to do something that no other pitcher has ever done in the history of this game when 20 of his first 21 decisions. And just tuning in Rube Marquardt. 1912 started off 19 and 1 finished up 26 and 11. The one, two. Rube Marquardt. Are you sure that's how you pronounce that last name? Are you just kind of throwing it out there with confidence? Rube Marquardt. Little chopper. Here comes Grosses. Bare hands underneath. He makes that play extremely well. Yeah, he does do that very well. Charge in with the bare hand. And then get rid of it. I mentioned last night though. He got a surprising high total of errors. 21 on the season. Especially when you got a guy that makes plays like this and 
You see he's timing it. He's, he's getting that position to get that bare hand and play that hop. It works. Here's Jose. He's 0 for 2. He's going out to right. He's going out to left. Takes ball one. What's that other guy's name? Nap what? Lajoui. Sure that's the right way to pronounce that one. Yeah, a lot of people say LaJoy. Good splitter. And the count one and one. I'm just not sure which is the right pronunciation. I've heard both. Now. Two balls and a strike. Something extra on there for that drag toe of his. No toe plate. Well, I do remember when they had those steel toe plates that they would wear. And it just went to a leather, extra leather over the shoe there. It went to some hard plastic that they would put over the toe. There's this foot drag of Roger Clemens right across there. We're a hole in there quickly. And what a good defensive year he had. And let that ball play him. Yeah, that was that wasn't pretty right there. The ball was hit hard. Stayed down all the way. And Tino looked like he was running from that ball. It looked like Tino was not ready for it. He may have been thinking about something else. Ever happened to you at first base? Heck yeah. Well, then we probably just saw it again. It happened to everybody. It shocks you. Kind of shocks you out of whatever little trance you might have been in or whatever you were thinking about. That'll be his fourth error of the season. His error is a nice play by Brosius. Soriano makes a good play, and they can't get him. There's a beautiful play by Scott Brosius. Yes, it was. Looked like that ball was going to be passed him for a base hit. He gloves it, then gives it to Soriano. Good adjustment by Soriano at second base. This ball was not perfectly thrown. But Soriano picks it, and he has to twist at the same time. And still, good enough arm. He tried to complete a double play. Good do it. Magno dig it down to first. So here's Canerco. He's two for two, a homer and a single. Comiskey Park group out in with a group of 20 or more fans and cheer on the White Sox during the rest of the season. For details, call 312 674 1000. Good pitch right there. Got some good movement. Final from Cincinnati 10 0 Cubs. Downstairs. Come on, Paul. Somebody's on his other stuff, and he just 
saves it for a special occasion. And that's exactly what it is. That was very smart. Look at that early. That's just good stuff, but he cannot thank you also. Two out, two balls, two strikes. Mistake twice. He'll, he'll come up with those pitches that he has in reserve. Victories, yes, they got a, about as good a shot as you've seen to set that record as the Yankees did the year that they did it. Well, Mariners have 17 games remaining. If they go 10 and 7, they got poof. Yankees that year went on to win 125 ball games. You see, Sean Lowe has come on, and you see his numbers. Gary Glover out there for six, gave up four. First pitch downstairs to Scott Brosius, one for two with an RBI. I think he's that's pretty good. Went 114 in the regular season and he closed it out by winning 125. And a World's Championship. Jose. Well, here's Soriano. 0 for 2 twice. He was caught looking. Inside fastball. A little line on Gary Glover. Six innings, four runs earned, six hits, one walk, had seven strikeouts. Derek Jeter. Two home runs and three RBIs off Gary. One in one to count. Previous high in strikeouts in a ball game was four. And three other starts. Good strikeout night for Gary against former world previous, excuse me, the reigning world champion, Yankees. And Roger Clemens worked six innings, struck out Canerco to end the sixth. That was his first strikeout. Yes, he did. He's gone. The hat trick. Yeah. 
Tough night for the kid. Gary Glover had him all messed up on the inside part of the plate. Sean Lowe, different pitch. Runs it way in there, and Soriano can't hold up. Low check swing. Turned his hips a little too far and brought the bat with him. Here's Knobloch. He's one for three. Singled in the fifth and scored ahead of the two run homer. If you're just tuning in by Jeter on the 3 0 count, and there's a little soft comebacker. And Sean has an easy top of the seventh, seventh inning stretch. 4 2 Yankees. Please join Pete Smith on tape and see God Bless America as an expression of thanks to the heroes involved in the rescue and recovery efforts of our fellow Americans. America as we get set to go to the bottom of the seventh. And that's the story. Four, six, and one, two, four, and oh. He was tuning in. Yankees with one in the second. Sox with one in the second. Yankees with one in the third. Sox with one in the fourth. And then the two-run homer by Jeter in the fifth. So it'll be Leifer, Lee, and Singleton. Well, Rogers throwing the ball well tonight. Scattered the four hits, giving up the two runs, made big pitches when he's had to, but he only has a two run lead. Sox run themselves a string of some hits, maybe a base on ball, and voila, on top. Well, that two run lead, you got to give a large part of that to Joe Torrey. Gary Glover really pitched well tonight. He hung the curveball for Jeter's first homer in the third. And I don't think anybody was expecting Derek Jeter to be hitting 3 0. Threw him for the most part just to get me over fastball. Torrey let him hit and he cranked it out of here. And that's just knowing your players and knowing the situation. So true, Tory wisely enough, letting Derek Jeter cut it loose 3 0. Not going to hurt anything. Jeter, good hitter, jumped on it. 2 and 2. Definitely got to know your players. Know the guys that can handle those situations and put a good swing on it. If it's not something that you regularly, like your number four hitter, cut it loose in those situations, you just got to know them. Know your guy. Well, in a tie ball game, not many guys are going to let Jeter hit 3 0 when you got Bernie Williams on deck. 
Torrey did. Some guys just don't know when to let guys hit three. Fouls it back, so the count hangs full. That's funny because that's true. I mean, you got to have. That's the difference between some managers that are really probably a little sharper than others, is they can read their players and they can read the situation and the feel of everything. I look out there and say, I think right now is a good time to cut him loose. <laughs> you look like a genius when it works out. Jeff, start us off. And that's ball four. It's time for us right now to have a look at our Jose Cuervo game summary. As you see the Yankees, they lead it. Four hits. I mean, excuse me, four runs, six hits in the air. Two runs, four hits, three socks. Jeter, two bombs. Andrew Clemens. He's done 100 pitches in a six plus. He's got one strikeout. Here's Carlos. He has walked and he has hit into a 4 6 3 double play. Ball gets away from Posada. High breaking pitch. Got to be a pass ball. Well, you see, pass balls. Posada running away with the league lead, 18. Well, that's including that last one, but it is definitely a pass ball. Right the crossover. Field straight up, spread out. I see Carlos trying to move the runner along there, shoot it to the right side sometimes when you're struggling like C. Lee. And you got a job to do. It helps. Bobby Howard. And count two and one. Yeah, sometimes it does help a guy who's struggling. Can okay, try to move it to the right side, but a lot of times you just don't want a situation where you get a guy's wheels turning too much. Usually when a guy's struggling like that and he's trying to move it to the right side, especially off a hard throw like Clemens, he's probably going to do exactly what Carlos did and just foul a couple off to the right side. Uh, yeah, you just never know. That's that's where you come back to the manager again and try and read your individual players who can handle it when they're in a struggling mode. Who can't? Carlos could be just doing this on his own. The manager's left him up there. On his own, too. He's going to get it done. Clemens over there. So one out, Lee for a third. for two. Now Brosius wants Posada out. And while we have a break in the action here, here's a reminder, Sox Fest 2002 will take place February 1st through the 3rd at the Hyatt Regency Chicago downtown. 
Meet current players and White Sox stars of the past. Collect autographs and shop for unique baseball memorabilia. So mark your calendars for the first through the third of February. Chris looped into a little double play, hit a little soft looper to Brosius. Carlos was on first, and they double him up. First pitch strike. See that graphic? Chris has done a very good job with runners in scoring position. 3 12. There's a base hit. Cleaver scores, and it's a 4 3 ball game. And another good job by Chris. You can see that he was he cheated across the plate on Clemens. Roger Clemens normally doesn't like, but Roger throwing one away from him on the first pitch, so he looks out there and slaps it into left field. Doesn't try to do too much. Ball's way out there. Look at that. That is a tough pitch to cover if you're not cheating out that way a bit. Well, here's Joe Torres. He's got a 13 game lead. He's going to go with Penn because he does not want to give Clemens an opportunity to have this streak of his snapped. And I agree with it 100%. That's what you manage for your player. The Rocket Roger Clemens with a chance to win it. He can't lose it. He'll depart and we'll be back. So Jay Watasek has come on with the runner on first base as I mentioned Clemens will not get a chance to lose this. Worst case scenario or no decision you see. Tossing is 3 0 with a 5 5 6 ERA. Well, it's hitting 3 0 3. Has 17 walks in his 34 innings. Giving up 44 hits. A lot of base runners, five home runs. Does have 46 strikeouts in those 34 innings. Well, if there was just a three or four game lead over the Red Sox, Clemens would still be in this ballgame. Royce twice he has gone out to Soriano at second. So Watasic, 29 year old right hander, 6'4, 235 pounds out of Bel Air, Maryland, right outside of Baltimore. He's pitched for Oakland, Kansas City, and San Diego. 4 6 and 1 for the Yankees, 3 5 and 0 for the Sox. They get their signs straight. And here we go. Outfield spread out. Bernie Williams slightly over towards Shane Spencer and right as first pitch ball. Mark Johnson on deck. The final now from Colorado. Rockies beat the D-backs 8-2. Just getting underway. Houston hitting in the top of the first at Pac Bell, and they're leading the Giants 2 0. San Diego did not score in the top of the first. At Chavez Ravine. Fouls it back. 
Count even is at one. Cleveland leading Kansas City eight to three. Bottom of the eighth at Jacobs Field. Top of the ninth in Minnesota. The Tigers six. Twins one. Well, a perfect world right here. Wallace Johnson giving the signs. You have the hit and run. First and third situation. Chris Singleton has stolen 12 bases. Been caught 11 times. First and third. Sounds real appealing for the White Sox. Uh -oh. Soriano. Boy, he guns it over there. Third double play turn by the Yankees, and we'll go to the eighth, trailing by one. Four three. Yankees on top. Derek Jeter getting things started right here. Let's take a look right now at our Mercedes moment. Derek Jeter. Curveball. Gone. Solo shot. He's not done. He's going to have the green light 3 0 and then hit himself a two run blast. Oh, Derek Jeter on the night. Two for three. Two home runs. Three RBIs. Couple of runs. So it'll be Jeter, Williams, and Tino Martinez to face Sean Lowe. Outfield around to the right, big gap in left center. First pitch strike on the outside corner, says home plate umpire Mike Winters. One and one. Tomorrow night, Kip Wells against Andy Pettit. It'll be Kansas City coming in for three, followed by the Minnesota Twins. A little tapper. Good pitch by Sean. Had him out over that front hip. One out. And here's a reminder the White Sox Wives and the Greater Chicago Food Depository will be accepting food donations at Comiskey Park this Sunday when the Sox host the Royals at 105. You can donate a can or non perishable food at any gate from 11.30 through the third inning and receive coupon, a coupon redeemable at the for a discounted 2000. Two White Sox ticket. Here's Bernie Williams. He's 0 for 3. 1 for 7 in the series. Takes the fastball high. Two and nothing. Bernie Williams, we talk about Derek Jeter swinging the bat 3 0. Bernie Williams is one of those guys who does an outstanding job when he's ahead in the count and getting the pitch to hit and hitting it real hard. Three and 0. Double barreled activity for the Sox, Howry and Pulsifer. John Lowe must have known that. It was a 2 0 breaking ball. Mary chases. Not a good pitch for him. Hitting left handed, right handed, a little bit of a different story. Yeah. I'll tell you, uh, Bernie Williams, pretty good hitter from both sides. 304 from the left side, 314 from the right. Yeah, like most switch hitters, especially guys with power, as he takes strike two. Most of them. Better low ball hitters left handed, better high ball hitters right handed. Bernie Williams, though, is one of those guys from the left side. He does a good job adjusting if he knows a pitcher is a high ball pitcher. He can get on it. He's looking up there. So the one out walk, and it'll bring up Tino Martinez. And bring out Jerry Manuel. He's going to go to the pin. So he wants Pulsifer. Sean Lowe works an inning and a third. Gives up the one walk. He'll depart. And we'll be back. Don't forget, immediately following tonight's ball game here on Fox Sports Net. 
You got your Chicago sports report. Here to recap of the Cubs and Sox games. Wide out Marcus Robinson status. And our focus tonight, Tony Amante of the Blackhawks. That's immediately after the game here on Fox Sports Net. New pitcher is Bill Pulsifer on for the 31st time of the season. No record has the RA at 604. 31 hits he's given up, 18 walks, 17 strikeouts. So good speed at first. Bernie Williams 11 for 15 in stolen bases. First pitch strike. Tino has struck out, grounded to second, and single. Houston scored four runs in the top of the first at San Francisco. That's in the left field. Carlos fighting the lights. Well, Carlos Lay's going to get back there. Himself in position and make the grab. Up and down below the lights, it appears. Here's the DH, David Justice. Justice is grounded to short, struck out, and popped to short. Four six and one for the Yankees, three five and zero oh for the Sox. Dave Justice has just hit two eighteen against Southpaws on the season. A hundred and one at bats, has seven home runs, seventeen RBIs. He struck out twenty nine times. AC. First pitch hunting pops him up left side. Royce Clay, he's there. If it comes down, this inning will be over. And we'll go to the bottom of the eighth. It is the Yankees by one. Sports Nets coverage of Chicago White Sox baseball is brought to you in part by your Chicago area Lexus dealer who invites you to test drive a Lexus today. Primeco. With Primeco, you get better local rates, smarter roaming rates, and long distance included. So go ahead and call. It's Primeco. AT&T Broadband. And by Hyundai, where driving is believing. Test drive one at your local Hyundai dealer today. Pitching change for the Yankees here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Coming on for Jay Watasek. Here the Southpaw Mike Stanton. Stanton, who worked in last night's ball game, won an inning giving up two runs on three hits. Yeah, Stanton, we'll see the rest of his numbers. He had a little trouble last night, but not to be unexpected. I keep bringing up the fact that you don't know how each individual. Is going to react to an extended layoff during the season that they just went through. Tony Graffinino has come out to hit for Mark Johnson, who was 0 for 2 tonight. There are the numbers on Tony G. Houston 4 0 lead, Giants hitting in the bottom of the first. Pitchers are Levon Hernandez and Dave Malicki. Drops a hook on him. The Sox top pinch hitters, you see the graphic. Four for nine. A long ball on the four behinds.
and so one and one. Sox is a team. Pinch hitting. They only have one home run. Hey, Tony has it. They've driven in 10 RBIs. So Graffinino has carried the load pretty much off the bench in these situations. Breaking ball. Is the man. Mariano Rivera. Well, one save off the Yankees mark on the record. Forty six. Dave Rigetti. That's inside two and two. Not his fault. Hello, Papa. And Tony fights that pitch off. Good pitch by Stanton on the fist. Sequence of pitches by Stanton. One out. It's time right now to take a look at our Jack Daniels nightcap recap pitching summary. As Gary Glover went six innings, career high seven strikeouts for him. Roger Clemens went six and a third. Gave a five hits, a couple of runs, had one strikeout. So here's Ray. He's 0 for three. He is granted the second. He is granted the third. And he is granted the short. Slow ball one. If you're just tuning in, three home runs in a ball game, two by Derek Jeter. He now has 20 on the season. One by Paul Canerco. He has 31. And that's off the glove of Brosius. Well, he's made two real good plays tonight. Couldn't come up with that one. That should be a base hit. Just playing up, even with the bag at third base, hit to his left. Basically, just saw him give an all-out effort. We've seen him make that play, but it's just because he's got fortunate to be perfect. That's what it takes to make a play like that. So Jose Canseco has come out to hit for Valentin. Valentin's over for three tonight.
he's talking things over just to make sure he wants to look, and now he's going to go to his horse. So stand well depart. And Mariano Rivera will come in, and we'll be back. So there he is, the man, the closer, the league leader, and saves Mariano Rivera. Four and five. It's a two-three-two ERA. A 76 strikeouts and a 73 and two-thirds, only giving up 56 hits, giving up five home runs. Not many walks at 12. Joe definitely showing that he wants to hold on to this game for Roger Clemens. 31 year old right hander. Out of the Chorrillo in Panama. 6'2, 285 pounds, and got one of the great releases in the game of baseball. Nice, easy motion, and has that little flip of those wrists. And that ball just jumps. Don't get me wrong, this man is no fun to hit off of at all. It's very, very difficult to lay off of his high pass, high cutter. He just keeps throwing it up there to hit as he knows, can't. Throw it's low, and they say that he gets it back down in time. Rob Drake had a perfect shot at it. All right, looked like he had an outstanding jump. But Sonny did get rid of it very quickly, and Soriano going to try and get the tag down. And that from that angle is tough to see. But you see how Soriano comes up. He's safe. Yeah, he was safe. You don't see it very often in an umpire when he sees an infielder pull that glove up like that call a runner out either. He has to put it back down on the play where he's. It's a bang bang play. Now most of the time when that glove goes up like that. Big hack back in Seiko. It's hard for him to get it back down. Pitch. And take another look at the play at second base. Contact is made right there with the bag. And he puts it on. Close play. Right there. He looked like he was just throwing right at him. Yeah. He really did. I mean, he just he threw it right up there and in. It's a bad, bad areas. I mean, you can go up and in, but it's released right up above the shoulders. Two strikes, two out. It's 
Well, close play at second to strike out of Canseco. Rivera gets out of it. We're into the ninth, 4 3 New York. PDAs, handheld. Top of the ninth inning, Yankees by a run, some changes for the Sox. Moving into third base, Jose Valentin will be Tony Graffinino. Behind the plate for Mark Johnson, it'll be Josh Paul. And on the mound, a pitching change. See Bob Howery's numbers, he's four and five, a four, five, eight ERA. He's got five saves and 10 chances. 60 strikeouts in his 70. Giving up 73 hits, 10 home runs, and 25 walks. So here's Posada. 0 for 2 with a walk and a run score. Just joining us, both teams with one in the second, Yankees with one in the third, Sox tied it. One in the fourth, then in the fifth, with two out. Now block aboard, a 3 0 count to Jeter. He hit it out of here. RBIs for the Sox, the 31st home of the season by Canerco. RBI by Leifer. And an RBI by Chris Singleton. Another shot. So here comes Spencer. He's one for three, had a soft single in the second inning. Spencer's only grounded into four double plays. Bobby get that moving fastball down. He is a good candidate. Takes that slider low and away. Tagging some other scores for you. Bottom of the eighth in Texas, 8 4 Rangers over Oakland. Oakland on a nine game winning streak. Seattle leading Anaheim 1 0, bottom of the third at Safeco. San Diego hitting in the top of the third in LA, leading the Dodgers 1 0. Houston hitting in the top of the third at Pac Bell, leading the Giants 4 0. Everything else is over. Cubs defeated Cincinnati 10 to nothing. 9 2, Mets over the Pirates. 8 2, Cardinals over the Brewers. Phillies beat the Braves for the third game in a row. 5 to 2. Montreal 5, Florida 2, up in Canada. And the Rockies beat the D backs 8 to 2 at Coors Field. Over in the American League. Cleveland beat Kansas City 11 to 3. Tampa Bay 12, Boston 2. Toronto over Baltimore 4 to 1. Tigers beat the Twins 6 to 2. And Spencer can't get that and count 2 and 2. Kip Wells against Andy Pettit. Just make your plans to be with us here at the ballpark. If you can't, that game will be over WCIU Channel 26. Talked about Spencer earlier where he hit those 10 home runs in the 
last part of the season, 98 for the Yankees. That was only with 67 at bats. 10 home runs and 67 at bats. That's about a 52 footer right there. Spencer this year, 200 and 30 at bats. Only nine home runs. Hey, those, those true power hitters, those guys like Sammy Sosa, Barry Bonds, McGuire. It's no fluke when they hit 10 home runs and 60 some at bats, 70 at bats. You do see a lot of players that have a streak like Spencer did that year. It's just an unbelievable ride for him, never to be forgotten. There goes the runner. It's very unusual when you, especially when you're just calling somebody up. Yeah, Spencer's case, you almost set yourself up. You come up from the minor leagues, you had 10 home runs and 67 at bats. And then they're sitting there thinking, man, we have got the next Babe Ruth on our hands. Kind of hard to live up to that. But you don't know when you're going to run into a hot streak like that. You just do it. Once again, Posada takes off. That pitch flared into right field. Mags can't get there. It's fair. So the double by Spencer. And the Yankees cooking here in the top of the ninth. Ducks on the pond, nobody out. Leonardo Contreras, he's on the phone to the bullpen. Spencer. Looking somewhere else for that pitch, but doing a good job of covering the outer part of the plate. Very defensive, a little flick at it, and that's what happens. That's a heck of a job on a tough pitch. Yep. He put it in play and got himself a double because of it. So here's Brosis. He's one for three. For the Yankees, 3 6 and 0 for the Sox. You're just tuning in. Pitchers of record are the starters. Gary Glover and Roger Clemens trying to pick up his 20th victory of the season to become the only man in the history of baseball to win 20 of his first 21 decisions. As we mentioned, Joe Torrey was going to do everything in his power to get that victory for the Rocket. And justifiably so. If this had been a tight ball game, same situation later on in the season, you couldn't have got Rocket out of there with a backhoe. Well, Roger Clemens, an opportunity to just add another feather to his cap of an unbelievable career. As we talked in the pregame show, he's certainly been. One of the best I have ever seen by far. And you got to remember, a lot of those victories as the count moves to three and over Boches. And his long career with the Red Sox pitching in Fenway. That's not even it. Something about Roger Clemens is the point that it didn't matter the situation, especially a guy that can turn it on to another level when the team needed him to. Well, he's one of the better competitors. And that load him up with nobody out for Alfonso Soriano. Josh Fall. Now Rogers in that category that you can say there are and have been pitchers as good a competitor. As Clemens, but not any better. Uh, that's true. And I think Roger Clemens has always been known as a guy, especially to go out there if the team had been in a funk. So the team had just lost four in a row. And Rogers coming to the hill that next day. He was the one you knew that would stop that little losing streak. He's the guy that would step out there and hold the opponent to two runs if that's what it needed to be done, or one run, or no, no runs. He, he just was out there winning. 
ERA. He's one of those true pitchers that the ERA is not the true telling story of how good he has been. He wins games. No, but I think if you put him in a normal ballpark, instead of having 279 victories coming into the night, he would be well over 300. There's been a lot of flares. I've seen a lot of flares hit off the rocket, off the green monster. So Sacks pack nobody out. Sox with the infield in. Soriano, 0 for 3 tonight. All three times he has been called out. Fastballs in the inside part of the play. Roger Clemens, if he wins this ball game tonight, you see that graphic on Soriano. Clemens will finish. I mean, we'll have a career record of 280 victories, 20 away from that coveted 300 win plateau. Down ball. There's one. They can't do anything with the speed of Soriano, but they get Posada. Yep, Soriano. He runs too well to go ahead and have the opportunity to turn this on him. But good job just making sure Tony Graffinino gives Josh Paul a good throw to home plate to get that lead runner. You know, talking about ballparks that you either hit in or pitch in, that's one thing that always amazed me about Ferguson Jenkins. Yeah, seven time 20 game winner. Six of them coming at Wrigley Field. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can always take into account the conditions that each player has done his, his big things, whatever they be hitters, pitchers, fielders. You always take the conditions of the field and whatever else the surroundings are. I'll never forget the statement, statement that Ted Williams made when I was talking to him one day and I asked him about the proposed trade between he and DiMaggio. He said, I said, What did you do in Yankee Stadium? He said, No, no, not Yankee Stadium, Detroit. He said, You put me in Detroit. I said, Well, what would you have averaged there? He said, I probably averaged 75 a year. Little flare going foul. I don't think you could ever really dispute a guy that no as great as Ted Williams. If he says it, you got to believe he could have been awfully close to whatever he was talking about. No, he missed five years, over five years in the service of his country. Prime time years. Put him in a normal ballpark, he may have hit 800 home runs if he hadn't missed that time and in a normal park. Ground ball, base hit. That'll score a pair. And it's a 6 3 Yankee lead. Soriano chops one right to Graffinino. This one just to the left of Graffinino. He can't get over to this one and it's going to drive in too. Almost hit about the same pace. About eight foot difference in location. Derek Jeter, two for four, two homers. He now has 20 on the season. Done an outstanding job. 339 with runners in scoring position. He's just a good hitter. He is, remember when he first got called the big leagues, didn't have this ability, but he has grown into knowing how to hit at the big league level. Strike on the corner. He made a believer out of me his first year. I can't recall our left hander that we had out there. He knocked him down. He got up and he looked at him, and you could just see how competitive he was. Next pitch, he hit a bullet right back through the middle. There's a chopper. Well, that's only play as the first. So two out. 
And here comes Bernie Williams. His first visit to the big leagues was in 95. He had himself 48 at bats. He hit 250. And then you turn around in 96. His first full season showed you he can play. You're right. He had 314, 25 doubles, 10 home runs, 78 RBIs. Well, you can just chart the rise of the Yankees with Derek Jeter's arrival, along, of course, with the outstanding manager, Joe Torre. Take it himself, but the Yankees come up with two big insurance runs. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth, 6 3 New York. The Yankees put two big runs up on the board here in the top of the ninth as Mariano Rivera trying to nail it down for Roger Clemens and also pick up his 46th save, tying the Yankee record. Set by Dave Forgetti. Sox will have the heart of their order coming up. Mags. Canerco. And Leifer. Mags one for three, a double, and a run scored back in the fourth inning. Well, Rivera is not flawless. He does have five losses, four wins. He's got the 45 saves, so he's done a great job. But mentioned, he's got five losses. Takes that pitch up and in. Two and oh, don't help him out. Oh. On the outside part of the plate, that wasn't even his cutter, that was a slider. That had some break on it. And the gun here at 92. Cutter of his is just a lot tighter, a lot smoother sailing across. Pretty good fastball right there with that cut action. And the count evens it two. Two for five against Rivera. Maglio, not bad. This guy is a hitter. You just want to take an approach that you're going to try and get him to get it down. Since he's come into this league, he has been a high fastball pitcher. As we could talk about so often, you show me a guy that knows how to pitch up. And I'll show you a winner. And this guy right here is one of the best of his time pitching up and knowing how to, that's for sure. Not hit hard. In the seats, count hangs at two balls, two strikes. We saw one of the best the six and the third out there tonight who's been a great high fastball pitcher. Roger Clemens. Roger Clemens is very good at knowing when to go upstairs and get a hitter to chase that pitch out of the zone. There's a chopper, two hopper, Jeter. Here comes Canerco. He's two for three. A homer, a single, and a strikeout.
24 mile an hour cutter. Call anybody that you faced similar to Rivera. No. Nope. Never. Yeah, this guy, you know, when he came on the scene, was pretty original. It really was. Even when he came into the scene in the 90s. There's a broken bat, but it's going to fall for a hit. So probably three for four. And right now, let's check out our dies drive coming back in the second inning. Paul Canerco leading it off against Roger Clemens. No, the only other guy I've ever seen that had as good a cutter as Rivera was Juan Guzman for a couple of three years there when he was with the Blue Jays. Is there is a strike on the inside corner? Juan Guzman has there for a couple of three years has as good a stuff as any any right-hander in baseball. But you know, you just picked up another guy yeah, that was very original in the way he threw the ball. Made him up, Soriano. Going to take it himself. And this ball game is over. So the fourth double play turn. As Roger Clemens has just become a 20 game winner. And he has done something that no other man has ever done. Won 20 of his first 21 decisions. And our congratulations go out to the 39 year old veteran. As Joe Torrey wants the baseball. So the final totals on game two of this three game set. For the Yankees six runs nine hits one error. They stranded six for the Sox three runs seven hits no errors. They left two. Clemens a winner. He is 20 and one. Glover takes the loss. Gary pitched well. He is four and three. Credit Rivera with his 46 save. Right now let's go back to our studios in downtown Chicago. With Eric Goodman. All right Hawk thanks very much. A big night for Kerry Wood and the Cubs. And Tony Amani talks tough about negotiating a new deal with the Blackhawks. The Chicago Sports Report starts now.